Hi. Uh, this video is going to be the first part in several part video, several parts of a the video response to my 500 subscribers video. I've been asked a few questions, and here's where I start answering them. Now, because of time constraints, I won't be able to do this very quickly. Um, you may see my videos answering these questions trickle in over the next couple of weeks. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the first one is from Black Chimp 99 Now, I can't see anything without my glasses, but my glasses also produce a bad glare, so I take them off. He asks, do I think that there should be a law against the misrepresentation of science and the scientific method? Well, this kind of boils down to a freedom of speech issue. Because of that, I don't think there should be any law against such misrepresentations. They are unfortunate and they're used as a tool by those like creationists and the religiously fervent, fervent to uh, forward their positions dishonestly. But to simply have a law against misrepresenting science, well it seems to really step on a lot of toes and it may in fact backfire because new ideas in science that may be contradict or conflict with or seek to overturn the current uh, paradigms could be squashed under such a law. So no, uh, I do not believe that misrepresentations of science and the scientific method should be outlawed. I think they should be educated against, but there's my answer to that. So thank you for that question. Now I was originally going to go and go through these in order, but to be honest, right today I've made uh, made myself a case of DM using uh, habaneros from my own garden. So it brings me to the question from Beware the Lizards, 42, wonderful uh, video maker she is. She asks, do I think that if humanity will self-destruct somehow? and or do I think things will eventually get better more rational more secular whatever and then she asked what kind of food I like now, let's go with the first question first question I think is pretty is pretty simple in my view I don't think we can self-destruct I do think that uh, we can rent, knock ourselves back basically to a paleolithic age but I think humans would survive at least for a time the real threat to humanity isn't what we can do, but what nature can do to us. In the case of, say, asteroid impacts, solar, massive solar flares, etc., 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 you can go off with all the 2012 apocalyptic drama if you want. But humans, yeah, we're actually pretty incapable of doing really that much damage to anything. We keep thinking we are. Uh, global warming is occurring. We're the cause of it. We're going to wipe out several hundreds of species, but life on Earth is going to move on without whether we do that or not. Mostly what we're going to do is cause damage to ourselves, probably knocking back our population a bit, and that's, well, if you consider that means the death of millions or perhaps billions is a very sad thing. But I think humans will survive. Now, are we getting more secular and rational? Well, we have to. As we develop a world that's based on the sciences, and for all you creationists out there, this world is based on the sciences. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching this video. Uh, we have to develop more rational, uh, we have to develop a populace that thinks more rationally so they can understand the issues. Hopefully, education is doing its job in that. But to be honest, I'm not entirely certain about that here in America, where 45% or more of the population still believes that the Earth is 10,000 years or younger. Okay, now let's go to the next subject. This is more fun. The food. Well, I have a couple things I really do like, and they're all made by my mom, except for one. The first one is biscuits and gravy. My mom was born and raised in the South, so she knows how to do biscuits and gravy in a very authentic manner. You can't beat them. They're just good. Really good. 
Okay, moving on to the next one is my mom's pinto bean, pinto bean soup, where it's basically just pinto beans stewed with a uh, ham hock um, over a long period of time. They're great. They're nice and salty and good bean flavor. I mean, uh, and you got the ham hock in there. And you have that with uh, skillet sizzling cornbread, which is made by first putting the skillet in the oven with a couple pads of butter until that butter gets all sizzly. And then immediately take that out, pour in your cornbread mixture, which my mom, when she makes it, you know, homemade, is excellent. If she uses a bag, it's okay. Put it back in the oven and let it cook. Take it out, you have the cornbread with your beans. And just as a little scientific note there, beans, the legume family, provides us with enormous amounts of nutritional um, availabilities. Well, sorry, probably said it wrong there. But they provide us an enormous amount of nutrition. Um, many of the amino acids we need come from the legumes. Uh, and we get fatty acids and all sorts of other things. And the things that the legumes don't cover, guess what, are covered by corn. So, other than the fact that you lose some nutrition with the cooking, you could almost live an entire life on pinto beans and cornbread with a little bit of ham hock thrown in. Pretty good stuff. Excuse me. That brings me in the the next one. I could talk about desserts that my mom makes. Man, they're amazing. But the next one I want to go to is my girlfriend. She makes the most amazing tilapia dish. It's tilapia, a white fish, baked, and then she puts that on a uh, bed of <coughs> a bed of a bean salad. That's um, a, whole, a whole bunch of different beans over um, sautéed radicchio and and uh, onions. And then on top of that, we put a uh, basil lemon vinaigrette sauce that she makes. It is amazing. Uh, oh, crap. Okay. Now, I just was interrupted by my sister. She came over. But it allowed me to play a fairly cruel joke on her. Um, she just needed a couple things that I have here. My family kind of all live right around me, so, you know, most of them live within a walking distance. It's kind of cool. But, uh, so that was my girlfriend's tilapia. The next thing I like to make, and I like to make myself, well, I like to make lumpia. My mom learned to make lumpia when she lived in the Philippines. She taught me how. Um, it's not very authentic nowadays, because, you know, it's had an Americanized twist put on it by my mom, but it's pretty good. But the next thing I like to make is out of my own, is uh, something that comes out of my own garden. Now, I know it's black and white, but this is a habanero. This is a red sativa habanero. Whoop. Here's a little bit bigger one. These guys are red instead of the normal orange, and they're a lot hotter than the normal orange ones. So I make quesadillas. A little bit of chicken, chopped up habaneros, grilled very good. Now the evil joke that I just pulled on my sister asked if she wanted a bite. Yeah, she's not too happy with me now. She can't take the hot food like I do. So, there's my first video. A little bit about food, a little bit about politics. Well, not really politics. A little bit. And a little bit about the future. Uh, I have several more questions to go over, so the next several videos will probably be on those. And I think it's a pretty good change from my normal uh, correcting videos where I have to correct what creationists claim. Okay. Oh, and I want to say a special thank you to all my subs, uh, and especially the mo most recent ones that put me over the 500 mark, and now I have like 553 or 58 or something like that. I can't, I'd have to look at it. And I want to thank Antiboo, um, for mentioning me in one of his videos because I think some of those subs, quite a few of those new subs uh, came from him. So I thank you for that. And uh, I'm going to put links into the sides for Black Chimp 99, Beware of the Lizards 42, and Anti Boom. So, and I hope you're saying all the names right. So, uh, see you guys all next time.